EAA Chapter 166, Hartford, Connecticut, home of the Vans RV-12 build, and no, I didn't snap my fingers and make our RV-12 instantaneously fly. I'm here with uh, Mark Scott, who's a president of uh, neighboring EAA Chapter 27 in Meriden, Connecticut. And you know, these guys were where we were once, knee-deep in the build of an RV-12, and from my perch here, it's proof that you can indeed finish an RV-12 project. And uh, we'll go back down to the ground and talk to Mark about what it took to actually get this airplane to where it is now. And then we'll come back up here to the cockpit and uh, talk a little bit more about the airplane. Yeah. Hi, Larry. Thanks Thanks for coming down. Love talking about this airplane and what our chapter's been doing. Um, so I've been flying for quite a while, and I built the Bear Hawk that's behind me here. I had a great time building it, really enjoyed it, learned a, quite a bit. And uh, flew it for a year or two and said, I'd like to do something else, get back in the building. But I didn't want to do it by myself. Um, so our chapter does a lot with kids. We fly a lot of young eagles. We've done aviation merit badge, uh, a lot of community stuff. And I really wanted to take the chapter to the next level. So I kind of put two and two together and uh, worked up a proposal for the chapter. I said, look, if we can get some commitment from adults, I think we should go build an airplane and uh, got people say, I think that's a great idea. Let's see if we can do it. So talked to the uh, airport management and talked to the city and they graciously loaned us half of the snowplow building, the garage, a heated place to build the airplane, plenty big. I said, great, now we got a place, we've got commitment from people. And I said, let's go do that. And so we started uh, putting a plan together and the plan was to uh, build the plane, um, get funds, raise money and build the plane as a series of kits. And as we're starting to plan this out, we found out Oshkosh, EAA at Oshkosh, was going to do something called a uh, Give Wings contest. They were built five sets of wings at Oshkosh in 2015, and they were going to give these wings away to other chapters so they can complete the rest of the airplane, and hopefully turn them into chapter uh, uh, flying clubs or what have you. I said, what a great opportunity. And one of the sets of wings was an RV-12, and I said, we should go after those wings. So we put together a great proposal, a whole financial plan, how we're going to do it, where we're going to do it, and we won these wings. So these wings were actually built at Oshkosh in 2015 over the Air Venture Week. People came up and they would drive rivets, and they could actually sign their signature by the rivet, and it was great. And I got to see these wings after they were completed. I got to Oshkosh just towards the end. So those wings were shipped to us, and then we got the fuselage kit, we put the wings away, and we started going on the fuselage. So we started with only about uh, six or eight kids. Uh, we, we wanted to work with the Meriden kids. We're in Meriden, Connecticut. We wanted to get the Meriden High Schools involved. And we found six kids that were really interested. And we started with them. We had four adults that were committed to come every week. We worked twice a week. And uh, that's the way we started. And the word got around. And typically, we'd have anywhere from six to 10 kids coming at each session, which is the right number for the size and number of projects we had. Uh, the magic number in terms of um, teaching was to have one adult with two kids and it worked out really well as we had one adult watching over and really 98% of the handwork on this plane is all kids. They did everything. They drew, you know, drilled the holes, did the rivets, the whole bit and the two kids would work with each other and you know, well how, how does this work and how do you do that and hold this part for me and all that and it worked out great. And these kids, a lot of these kids went from really not knowing how to drill a hole or use a file or deburr to reading a, you know, a relatively complicated, not top of it, but a comprehensive set of plans with a set of instructions and working with each other, putting the engine in, assembling the landing gear. And it was great how these kids would just eat this thing up and no fear. And uh, they picked up a lot of skills. So the kids have got other commitments, school, sports, what have you. We met twice a week. We'd meet one weekend uh, for three hours uh, one, uh, one of the weekend mornings, either a Saturday or Sunday morning, depending on how some of the kids' schedules were, and on Monday evenings. The airport was open Monday evenings for Civil Air Patrol. We'd work two hours there, so it was only five hours a week. But we weren't in a race. We are going to get it done when we got it done, and uh, we just kept that up for three years. And it took a little over three years to get the plane built. It, it's so much more than just learning the hand skills. These kids learned about organization, like I talked about with the cars, car, uh, the parts, reading plans, working with each other, risk management because sometimes you're working in a part we, we'd spent you know months putting the fuselage together and you might have to put a part together or drill a hole and you realize if you do this wrong you might scrap a big expensive part so they learned about well mocking up and doing tests and drilling you know uh, holes in another part to make sure you know how to do it and and little things like that that really really uh, started to come to light as an educational thing and so they get this whole big experience and one of my favorite stories 
uh, Tyler is with us for two years, you know, great kid, and it was time for him to start talking to his guidance counselor about what he wanted to do, you know, going on to college or wherever. He wanted to do something technical. So he walks into his guidance counselor's office, and they're chatting, and uh, the counselor says, well, you know, what would you like to do? I'd like to do something, you know, technical, maybe aeronautical. She goes, great, what do you do in your spare time that's, you know, kind of along those lines? He goes, well, I built an airplane. She goes, model airplanes, those, those are great, that's a great way to learn. And he goes, no, I built a real airplane. It took him 10 minutes to convince that counselor that he had built a real airplane. Now tell me that doesn't make an impression, right? Makes an impression on a counselor and anybody he talks to with a, an interview or even on a resume, I built an airplane. And that whole conversation will just carry. And I, it helped him get to wherever he wanted and I know it helped a bunch of other kids. I wrote some letters of recommendation for other kids. This kid was here, he learned, he built an airplane and they all got to the places they wanted to go. So Mark, what, what makes this a good airplane uh, for maybe a first time build, a first time pilot, and uh, what makes the RV-12 a good platform? So the RV-12 as a kit is really wonderful. The plans are well, well illustrated, well documented, and so kids and adults that have, have a lot of building experience can come in and pick right up where they left off or pick up where somebody else did. They're, the kit itself is complete. Basically everything in the kit is included except for uh, paint and fluids. So you don't have to make a lot of decisions about what to put in it, uh, go purchasing parts and wonder about they fit. It's just a kit all together. So it rolls really nicely in terms of the build process. The other thing that's nice is you can buy it in a series of kits. We bought one kit at a time. Uh, we did some fundraising, uh, built up enough money, bought the next kit, started working on that, built some money so you can buy it as you go, and that works out really well. In the end, you've got a plane that's very marketable. So we didn't want to lose any money on this, and the RV-12 certainly holds its value once it's built, so you can sell them for as much or more than what you put into it. So if a chapter wanted to build it and sell it, because chapters can't own an airplane per EAA rules, uh, you're going to get back your money and maybe even more. So that was a financial consideration, and uh, we ended up turning this into a club plane. And so as a club plane, it's wonderful, especially for uh, lower time pilots. It's a way to get into a very inexpensive flying. It burns less than five gallons an hour. Uh, insurance is easy because it's so well known. This is serial number 900. There are over a thousand kits out there. I'm not sure how many are flying. So it's a very well known quantity. You know, just like vans, wonderful flying qualities, very benign, stalls are very, uh, you know, very easy. Um, and it just takes a little getting used to it. The stick is very light, right? That's a great roll control power. And so it uh, teaches a lot of uh, fine motor skills and smoothness on the airplane. So unlike flying your Cessnas or your Pipers, you come in here and it's a whole different but wonderful feel. And uh, I think that's really advantageous to pilots getting uh, better at what they do. You know, we're at the stage in our build where we're starting to uh, do the glass and the windows. Right. And uh, anybody that's ever flown an RV-12 should experience this airplane uh, because the visibility outside is incredible. Oh, yeah, it's nothing like you would get in, in a lot of the factory planes. It's a bubble canopy. I, I tell people it's the closest thing to a, a flying carpet that you can get, right? You're cruising along low altitude. It's you know relatively quiet, and just the whole world is in front of you. And you can look down real nice, we were talking about this sooner, right? You put it in a bank, you can look in, you know, almost straight down. So that's a lot of fun for your passenger and the pilot as well. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty basic airplane, it's VFR, of course, and uh, this airplane, you guys have gone with the Dynon Skyview HDX. Uh, single big screen, but pretty much everything you need, right? Yeah, it's all self-contained, like the mode I have right here now, they've got a flight instruments on the left, moving map on the right, it's got ADS-B so you can see traffic, and then all my engine instrumentation on the bottom. Uh, it works out really great. It's, it's reconfigurable. You can change it and just go to uh, all flight instruments if you decide. Uh, you can go. You can change this to just the, the larger map if you choose. So yeah, it's it's pretty uh, pretty flexible and pretty much set up the way you want. And we've got a single com radio, Garmin com, with a built-in intercom. Audio is really good, really crisp. You know, I'm yeah. I'm a real stickler when it comes to audio quality, and this is uh, probably about as good as it gets, I think. Yeah, it's uh, it's perfectly nice. Very simple radio, no, nothing complicated about it. It's got a monitor, monitor feature, which is great. You know, picking up Adas and stuff like that. So this airplane's pretty light on the controls, really responsive, and. Uh, Good, good airplane for a first-time pilot, maybe somebody, uh, you know, learning how to fly or maybe somebody new to LSAs, uh, you know, the LSA market uh, and two-seaters like this, 
are popular for older pilots coming out of heavier airplanes. Right. So what might you think the transition could be for somebody moving into this? Uh, not that difficult. I've actually helped some people transition in this airplane. Some people pick it up right away. Some people need a little more time just to get used to the controls. But it's a real airplane. I mean, it flies like a real plane, all the controls. Uh, it's got plenty of control power at low speed. It's just light, so you have to respect um, you know, the winds and so forth. But uh, it, I really don't see any problems with it. And you, it certainly could be a trainer. A lot of people use these trainers. Yeah. Like the stick is so light. So the roll rate in this thing is really quite good. So if I roll this thing over here at 45 degrees, I do a turn, right, I can go whoop, over another 45, and then back to middle. <laughs> Real stable. Yeah, you can actually put points on your rolls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> so you don't get to do that in many airplanes. So, pretty efficient engine, the uh, Rotax 912. Decent amount of speed, too. Uh, it seems like yep. a good match for this airplane. Yeah, no, it's the right, it's 100 horsepower. It gives you a nice climb. Like I say, cruise speeds uh, at moderate power, 5,200 RPM or so, between 115 and 120 knots true. Uh, so, you can you can get around without, uh, you know, in a decent amount of time. Uh, and it burns less than five gallons an hour. And if you have the access to mo gas or unleaded gas, this will burn it, uh, which is really nice. So, Mark, what kind of speeds are you looking for coming in the pattern to uh, come in for a landing? So, uh, one thing is this plane is very clean, so you want to make sure you slow it down. So, I like 75 uh, when I finally get on downwind, and, and I put flaps down at the first notch of 75. And when you get all trimmed up, you're down to about 65. At 65, put down the second notch of flaps. And you kind of come around the corner between 60 and 65. And finally, you want no more than 60. 55 is preferred if there's no wind and that'll give you a nice uh, touchdown with a good round out. Any faster than that, you tend to float. And a lot of people when they're first flying these airplanes uh, tend to float a lot down the runway. So like a lot of Vans planes are clean, so it makes them fast. It also makes them uh, a little more, uh, a little more careful energy management coming around. But it's, it's just something to get used to. And thanks a lot to Mark Scott for a uh, good demo in this nice RV-12 and for uh, hosting the neighboring uh, EAA Chapter 166 down here in uh, Meriden, Connecticut. Thanks a lot for watching. Yeah, thank you. Fun.